So did you start having digestive symptoms come out of nowhere? Maybe you're wondering if people can get IBS all of a sudden and you know why that happens. So in this video, we're going to discuss why people get IBS all of a sudden. Sometimes this does happen uh, versus the sort of chronic thing that you know you always always had digestive symptoms. Um, so in this video, we're going to discuss uh, three of the most common uh, things that are going on there and. The first being like infectious, uh, which includes uh, a little bit on inflammation and how that process occurs. Uh, the second being stress in the nervous system and then susceptibility and genetics. Um, so if this interests you, keep watching. We're going to dive into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a s statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. So why some people get IBS all of a sudden <clears throat> is what we're going to talk about here. Um, there's um, three main things that we're going to talk about, but first I want to talk about the post-infectious side. So typically this occurs from some sort of uh, infection like a bacteria, a virus, or even a parasite that can uh, get into your digestive tract and start to create inflammation. That inflammation is categorically, we would call that enteritis or inflammation in the intestines. So um, uh, so most commonly this occurs, uh, you know, usually you get an infection like this and it basically is self-limiting. It, it, uh, the body takes care of it and, or sometimes you do need to take antibiotics, but in either case, you know, you get rid of it and there's, uh, you know, a week or two of intestinal, uh, imbalance, you know, diarrhea, that kind of thing. And then after that, uh, you're fine. Uh, things go back to normal within, you know, a few weeks. When you have uh, this post-infectious IBS, it's sort of the lingering uh, symptoms that you have from the bug uh, aren't going away. And uh, typical bugs that would cause this um, on the on the viral side, you know, it's um, norovirus and things that typically uh, uh, cause the flu and things like that. Um, on the bacterial side, it could be E. coli, Salmonella, and even uh, Clostridium difficile, which is uh, um, something that typically you would get from a hospital or taking uh, uh, antibiotics for long periods of time, you can get C. diff. And so once those bugs are either taken care of by your body or treated uh, with antimicrobials or, or parasitic medications, usually, uh, <clears throat> like I said, your body will balance things out. So what's going on with, with the people that uh, they don't get that sort of even out situation? Um, so typically it's caused by a chronic inflammatory state. So the second thing I wanted to talk about as a possible cause for getting IBS all of a sudden is with stress. So stress, um, we all experience stress from time to time, uh, some people more than others. Um, so, and that kind of gets into susceptibility, but Everyone, you know, if you uh, experience a really acute stressor, uh, will have some sort of reaction to that. And the nerve endings in your digestive tract do respond to these stressors. So if you have a really acute stressful event, especially if it goes on for long periods of time, it can create uh, dysfunction in how your digestive tract is firing. So the nerve endings inside the digestive tract uh, are... Um, responsive to systemic uh, stressors um, and sometimes uh, it can cause uh, too much stimulation to those nerves or too little stimulation um, leading to uh, imbalance in how quickly your uh, stools are, are flowing through so if it's too much stimulation typically we think of you know more diarrhea and too little with we think of more constipation but the stressors um, in your body or the amount of um, adrenaline going through your body can be part of that and so if you're experiencing 
uh, uh, chronic stress for, for months, years, like, you know, maybe a really stressful job or a really stressful relationship or, you know, you have a lot of, uh, you know, psychological or mood uh, things going on that can, you know, be, um, you know, part of the IBS picture. But when it's coming on all of a sudden, usually you think of like a, an acute kind of uh, stressor that's uh, triggering those nerve endings. And the same thing with chronic IBS is, uh, you know, there's oftentimes there is a psychological or stress component to that as well. Last thing we want to consider uh, for why people get IBS all of a sudden is genetics and susceptibility. So some people tend to get to be more susceptible to getting this, of course. And, um, you know, it's, it is something we're st still referring to, uh, you know, acute onset, all of a sudden IBS, but there may be certain genetic types or, you know, people in general that get this. Uh, and so I wanted to account for that looking at some genetic factors. So, um, first one that comes to mind is people that, you know, may be more, uh, uh, susceptible to probiotic or good bacterial flora microbiome imbalance, and that may be accounted for by uh, variances in the FUT2 uh, genotypes. So uh, these are um, basic, basically genetic alterations uh, that one can have in how well the good bacteria stick to the intestines and stay stay there. So uh, FUT2 is one of those where you have a lot of variants there. Um, that could be part of the problem. And, uh, you know, that does suggest, you know, maybe part of the fix is to, you know, help that, uh, area, uh, you know, focus on microbiome support. Um, so I won't get into all the details on which probiotics to take, uh, for that, but, uh, you can look and see, you know, if, uh, you, you know how to look at your genetics, uh, FUT2 could be one of those susceptibilities. Um, and then there's also, uh, dairy and gluten. So gluten, uh, the variants would suggest someone has, uh, more susceptibility to celiacs. Uh, there's a lot of different combinations that one can have. There's no one combination that's going to tell us, yes, you have celiacs or you might have it. Uh, I may do a separate video just on this, but uh, there's uh, several variants in the, uh, they're called HLA uh, DQ, uh, DQ2, uh, and there's different variations of this. So um, you can look for those, but uh, if you have a lot of variation in those, uh, that could uh, lead one to more to have more inflammation and then have more trouble uh, repairing the tissues uh, that are causing the inflammation. So for celiacs, it's HLA D, D, uh, Q2. And there's, uh, so it's not just DQ, there's uh, several uh, different ones. Uh, so I may leave those in the description. Um, and then there's also, or you can ask it in the comment section, I'll uh, post those. Um, and then there's also uh, K1A 1109 variations in that. Uh, also lead to more susceptibility with celiacs. Uh, but again, there's not just one uh, variant there. And then also lactose. So if you're not uh, breaking down your lactose, which is normal as we get older, uh, you're not going to break down your lactose. But some people are um, variated in their genetics or where they do uh, continue to break down lactose. And that's called uh, the name, uh, common name for that uh, enzyme is uh, MCM6. So variations in that uh, would suggest, you know, you're probably not lactose. You don't have a problem with lactose. Um, and so, uh, but if you do, then uh, that may be leading to more inflammation in your digestive tract and make you more susceptible to, uh, you know, added inflammation. And then there's also like with the repair process, uh, methylation. So if you don't have uh, enough methyl methylation factors, like you have problems with MTHFR and, and B12 and other uh, enzymes in the methylation pathway, that could also lead to uh, difficulty with repair of the tissues. Um, and then, of course, there's histamine too. So if you're not breaking down your histamine inside the digestive tract, that could also lead to more susceptibility uh, when you have a stressful event or when you have the uh, infectious agent that does get into your digestive tract. Um, so it's clear that some people do get IBS all of a sudden and have trouble getting uh, over that. Um, that's all I had for this video in terms of uh, some of the triggers of why people do get IBS all of a sudden. Um, I will be posting another video uh, about how to go about like curing or treating IBS. So be sure to check that out. Um, if you like this type of information and you like the video, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.